Okay, let's see if we can do something interesting with this data. This is a raster file of elevation across Great Britain. And there's a link to this file in the description for this video. So what we're gonna do first of all is just make sure we're zoomed out to the full layer. And then I'm gonna hit the processing toolbox button to turn the processing toolbox on. And what I'm gonna do here is first of all, create a hex grid over the raster layer. So I can go to vector and then research tools and then create grid, but I usually just type it into the processing toolbox search box. I just usually type in grid, but like I said, it's available via vector research tools and create grid. So I'll double click create grid and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a polygon grid, but actually I'm going to use hexagons. The grid extent is going to be calculated from the layer. So I want the grid to cover the same area on the map as my GB terrain layer. And my terrain data is at a resolution of 50 meter cells. So it's reasonably high resolution. The horizontal spacing is going to be 10,000 as so is the vertical spacing. So 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers. And in this case, whoops, in this case, I'll choose to save the grid to somewhere on my computer. I'll put it in this folder. I'll just call it 10K grid, 10KM grid GB. Copy that file name, hit save. I like to paste the file name into the layer name box so it's got the same name. You don't have to do this, it's just what I do. Click OK, and then if I hit run, we get a 10 kilometer grid of hexagons across the whole layer. Okay, so what I would usually do now is I can run a tool to calculate elevation values maximum, minimum, and so on across the grid. But probably what I'll do first is I will add another layer so that I can select only those hexagonal cells that have land in them. Now I've added a geo package that has local areas across Great Britain in it. And I'm just going to use this to select the hexagons that have some land in them. Otherwise, we've got all this other space outside Great Britain in the sea where we don't want to do analysis on it. It will just slow things down. So here I'm going to select the hexagons that intersect with the land layer. And again, there's a link in the description to this video if you want to follow along. So if I go to vector and then research tools, I can go to select by location and in this case, I want to select features from the hexagon layer. So that's my 10K grid layer that intersect the features from the GB boundaries layer. And all I need to do now is click run. My computer is quite fast, so it's quite quick. And there we have the selected area. Now I'm going to select the hexagon layer on the left. I'm going to right click export and then here I'm going to save the selected features as and all I need to do is browse to the folder where I want to save this to I'll give it a new name and I'm just going to call I'm just going to add the word land onto the end of the file name click save I usually change the layer name here too just to keep things neat but again you don't have to. So I'll click on OK. And now we have a hex grid covering just areas with land. Now, because it's a 10 kilometer grid, it does look a bit chunky around the edges, but that's fine. So now what I want to do is for each hexagon, if I zoom into a hillier area, for each, each hexagon, I want to run some statistics. I want to know for each hexagon, what's the highest elevation in each one. And then I want to use that once I've got that information to create an interesting map. It's just kind of summarizing data. So to do that, let me zoom to the full data set. In the processing toolbox, 
if I search for zonal, zonal statistics is what we're looking for. But you could do this via raster. And I can't even remember what it's actually hidden in the raster. It might not even be in the raster menu. I can't actually remember, which is fine. I always just use a search box in the processing toolbox. So I'll go to zonal. I've recently used that, but it's listed down here. So I'll double click there is, zonal statistics. Sorry, that's what we're using. I'll double click zonal statistics. There we go. And the input layer here is going to be the GB, yeah, the 10 kilometer grid with land in them. The raster layer is going to be the terrain layer. The, it adds like an underscore to the new columns. That's fine. I'm not bothered about, bothered about that. And then the statistics to calculate by default will be count, sum, and mean. But I want to change that. I don't want count, sum, or mean. I want the maximum. So I'm wanting to calculate the maximum elevation value in each hexagon. And that's going to come from the underlying terrain raster data set. So that's all I'm going to do. I'll click OK. But as you can see, there's all these other options. You know, you can have some count will count the number of raster cells in each hexagon. You can get mean and median and so on, but I want maximum in this case. So that's fine. The zonal statistics um, to calculate. We've done that fine. We are going to create a new layer. So I'm going to save this to geo package and then I just need to browse to where to save it to. I'm going to call it 10 km lev max gb. Hit save. I'm going to give it the same layer name and I'll click OK. Now this may take a, a minute or two, but let's see how we get on. On my computer, it's probably going to be quite quick. Okay, so it's running the tool now and what it's doing is for each hexagon on our map, it's looking at the raster data set and telling us what the maximum value for elevation in each raster cell is. And the output of this is going to be a new hexagon data set and it's going to have a new column in it called sum with an underscore before it because that's what output column prefix does. Okay, so that's done. I'll close this. Let me turn off the terrain layer. And if I look at my original layer and I open up the attribute table, it's just got some numeric values in it to do with the hexagons. If I open up the new one, which is brown at present, it's got this max value. So that's the max value for any single hexagon. And the value here of 1,345, that's in meters, and that represents the highest elevation for any land across Great Britain. So now, if I double click this layer, go to symbology, and then let's go to graduated. Let's change the value we're using for graduated symbology to max. And I'm going to change the color ramp. So what I'll do here is I'll click on the little drop down and I'll go to create new color ramp. And I'll choose CPT city. I'll click OK. And what I'm going to use here is I'll go to topography and Let's use this one called the wiki. It's a bit bold and wild, but that's fine. Click OK. Now I'll click classify. And if I click OK, it's going to be a bit ugly, but let me close the processing toolbox for a moment and move the map over. So we've still got the black outlines, but we're going to get rid of those. So I'll double click again so we can see more easily what we're doing. So I'll choose 10 classes and instead of equal count, I'll choose natural breaks and then I'll click apply. That's a bit better. And if I choose equal count and hit apply, you can see you don't get as much graduation. So I'll choose natural breaks, I'll hit apply. And if I want the black outlines for the hexagons to go away, if I go to symbol and click on the drop down and then configure symbol, what I'll do here is I'll click simple fill and in stroke color, what I'll do first of all is I'm going to click this little data defined button and I'm going to hit edit. 
It seems complicated, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to use symbol color. So I'll click what it says. I'll double click what it says symbol color. It goes in the box here. I'll click OK. Let me make the stroke with 0 0.15 here. A little cosmetic adjustment. I'll click OK and I'll apply this. And now the outlines of the hexagons have the same color as the fill. So if I click OK and I go and zoom into the north of Scotland, we can see we have a hex map that summarizes the underlying raster data set. And what I'll do is I'll just change the layer so it's a little bit transparent. And we can see the underlying areas where they're hilliest. Okay, let's go back to full opacity. So that's how you can take a data set. It could be anything, but if you've got a raster data set and you overlay a grid data set on top of it, you can use this tool called Zonal Statistics to derive statistics based on your raster layer. And it has so many useful applications. This is just a little experiment with Great Britain terrain data. And I hope that you have found it useful.